we're here, everybody, to um, talk about, you know, black issues um, involved in the community, whether it's political, social, educational, um, no matter what the case is. So um, irrespective of your religion um, or status. So today we are discussing um, social media. We're discussing the positive aspects of social media and we are discussing the destruction um, that it has caused within our black community as well. So um, I have my co-host Natural and I also have our guest, which I'm very proud to have, Abul Vara. And we are going to just get right into it, folks. It's at the top of the hour. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. So social media, right? Abu Bada, are we looking at the positives? Or are we looking at the negatives first? What are we looking at, sir? What's, what's your at, on it? Uh, positives. All positives. right. So looking at social media right now, I mean, you can look at it as um, thing, an outlet for businesses, right? You can look Correct. at it as an, an opportunity when something happens in the community and we need to gather. It's great. It's right on time. It's it's real time. We can gather as a community and make things happen. So there are some positive aspects to it. Um, what are some of the things that you look at as positive aspects? Well, for me, the positive aspects of social media is the quick, um, quickest, a quick way to get information to see what's going on. All right. Right. I can see right now what's live going on in Africa, what's live going on in China, what's live going on in any event, which we didn't have a good 20 or 40 years ago, unless it came through mainstream media. Correct. Correct. So that's, you know, some of the positive political aspects for um, black Americans, the activism, especially when we see um, what happened related to George Floyd and George Floyd being killed. You see right. the impact on the black community, how it's, the information spread wild all across the U.S. amongst the black community and internationally, right, internationally. So, you know, I, there is a lot of positive aspects of uh, social media that we could use for our benefits, right? So that's my aspects. That's one of my aspects. Natural, your thoughts? Positive? I, I feel basically the same thing, that it's very good for networking and, and communicating with people that you don't see on an everyday basis. Let's say you have family that's overseas. It's a good way to communicate with them. Besides, like WhatsApp, you see pictures of your family, you know, things of that sort. Um, marketing. Oh, yeah. 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 That's another thing to look at. Um, I know a lot of um, uh, organizations use it um, as a means to gather. Like I know um, here in my area in California, there's a brother, Barry uh, Acacius, and he uses it as his platform to be able to get people in the community. Like recently he was handing out um, backpacks for the youth and things like that. And so he can use these groups and then put that information into different groups and kind of get more people involved, you know, in that movement of what he was doing here in my area. I know uh, Natural, she has the movement there in her area uh, with Huey P. Newton and uh, Gun Club and then having that involvement with different aspects of, uh, of the community has been helpful for her. So when it looks like um, different aspects in, um, the community we have to look at. We have to kind of look at all areas, though. I also find that we have a lot of difficulties with people using it um, for things like the gender wars. You know, I feel like a lot of it is being used for gender wars. A lot of it is being used for, um, you know, just uh, sometimes just harming, bullying, you know, people, things like that. And it's like that negativity. And I'm wondering how can we move into more of the positive aspects that we brought up instead of, um, you know, what we have been. And I think I would venture to say, and sadly enough, that majority of the population is in the negative aspect of it. So I'm looking at what can we do to move people into using it as a positive uh, mode of, of, of media. Natural, your thought? I believe in this, this time that we're in right now, it's um, basically hard to say because it's too far gone. Um, social media promotes all kind of negative agendas that, you know, I, I basically don't agree with, which could be homosexuality, like, you know, you know, to our children. It's just so many things that's negative right now. I feel like it's just long gone. I mean, it's yeah. kind of hard to divert back to, you know, seeing the positive aspects of social media when social media has caused so much destruction within our community and with our children as well. It's like social media changes the whole perception of reality itself. And it's like we replace our communication and um, social life by being more digital. Um, for instance, you know, we see our friends online so often, 
you know, whether they are known, they're known personally, or if we just know them, you know, through social media. And so we don't have that, that in-person interaction anymore. Right. We use social media as an escape or, you know, an escape to get away from reality itself or to create a whole person persona of who we are instead of who we truly are. Mm. Abba Butter? You know, we have to re remind each other or ourselves for the audience. Social media is not a living, not a living being. Mm -hmm. Right. So in reality, social media is a, it's a mirror into um, the dysfunctions in the black community from a certain aspect of the black community. Mm -hmm. And it, so it's, it is a mirror or a reflection on some of the trauma that black people have. Some of this trauma could go back to um, systemic racism. And some of the results of systemic racism, how it impacts black people today. This is the negative that we are seeing on social media, the broken home. What type of children grew up in the broken home? We can see what they're doing now on social media. So we can see that the degrading or the downfall of the family structure, um, social media is just a reflection. What we see on social media is a reflection of the breaking up of the family, the home, the black moral, all these things. So when we talk about the negativity of social media, then we have to, we have to start talking about uh, how to fix these things. Now, I travel, I live outside of the U.S., all right? Now, outside of the U.S., in different countries, the government has certain control over social media, what is put out there. Now, when I talk about governments, we cannot compare governments outside to the U.S. government because in other countries, the people who live in that country are the people who are ruling that country. In America, for black people, the people who are ruling U.S. Is, do not reflect us. Matter of fact, they are our enemies. They're the one who broke up the home. So outside of the U.S., the government control what people put on social media, just like TikTok. TikTok is an entity uh, that is Chinese. And there's right. a different version of TikTok in China that we don't have here where you don't see the neg negativity. You, you understand? Right. So, so right. social media is just a reflection. Now, if we want to control what's on social media, right, and that's a, a big topic within itself, I think one of the aspects we have to look at is why black people, us collectively, don't have our own social media platform. That's it. That's it. So I was looking at some of the comments. I was saying the same thing. Other people have said this, you know, time and time again. We need our own. We need our own platform. You know, we need our own media. Um, my concern is once we get our own media, would it not be quite similar to Facebook? Would it, that destruction not just follow us onto our own? How would we manage something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having our own would be a good start, you know, to be able to manage things. But we as a community have to be able to maturely handle one another in media. You know, I feel like a lot of these people have these like, uh, I don't know, what do you want to call them? Um, armchair warriors or whatever. And they want to sit back and type all their issues and their problems on social media and then talk bad about you. And then, you know, and then hide and run and then block, you know. <laughs> It seems like social media now is a public diary where they just express anything they feel and uh, anything that they're going through within their life and to, to, to everybody, thousands of people. It's like nothing's yeah. private anymore. No, no. It's like you, you just put anything out there, you know, and it's, it's almost like regurgitating. It's it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. and a lot of times, um, you know, I'm looking at people and they're not only they're putting out personal business, they're putting out. Um, you know, stuff that's going on um, that, that really, really shouldn't even be put out there, you know? And then when you try to check people, you try to help people, they don't want to listen, you know? I think so. within our culture is that we've learned to be so destructive against one another. And it's been happening for so long that it's just hard to fix. You know, it's just hard to fix because everybody's mindset is totally different from the next person. So we're just used to creating so much chaos and confusion amongst ourselves and with the whole crab in the bucket mentality is um it's like social media is not used to be uplifting or to uplift one another or encourage one another it's just um it's been a, a tool for people to attack one another so right. to be honest the only reason why i'm on social media is for one my business for two the movement and for three for family that i don't see every day or every year if I didn't have those three things going on within my life, I wouldn't be on it at all. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really see anything positive about it. And I'm a very positive person. It's just, it's just been so destructive. But I also find, 
I mean, I've also find people, you know, even within the movements, right? So we have different movements mm -hmm. that want to talk to each other. And then you see fighting between movements and you're like, wait a minute, we're all black people, but we can't, we can't even stop fighting amongst ourselves. The problem we see fighting black. with people even outside of the movement. I mean, it's fighting everywhere, everywhere, right. Right. within the churches, yeah. every, everywhere, everywhere you go. I could, yeah. I could go on social media, just, just log on to Facebook. And, um, I know everything is, um, algorithms, but some, I watch a lot of positive things, but then I'll see a reel with two women fighting in Walmart is, <laughs> um, right. everything is like on social media. Most of, of, of what we see whenever it comes to our people is just negative or fighting because we're so used to the drama. We're drawn to the, uh, the drama is attention. Mm. It's like some of some of us like the attention, some of us like the confusion because it's something to be entertained by. But this is another issue, though. Mm -hmm. And then we have to look at the bigger picture. And one mm -hmm. of the bigger picture is that the algorithm is promoting these things. So okay. when we talk about the algorithm is promoting the negativity, they have a study mm -hmm. where um, it came out that Facebook was directly trying to get people. Uh, to have some type of mental health issue due to posting, right? And this was brought up to me by a sister I know who suffered. She is um, bipolar and schizophrenia. And she said that she had some episodes from related to some Facebook posts. And I just started, she's talking from her mental illness. And then one day, it came on the news that, yeah, you know, so Facebook, which also owns Instagram, like targeting women, females like this. So, they are actually promoting these things. And then the reason you're going to ask, why are they promoting these type of negativities? Because it distracts people from what's really going on. Like I have shared with the sister here that on Facebook, I'm shadow banned on Facebook. Mm. And, and they shadow ban me just because I was talking, making videos about George Floyd incident. And Facebook pulled my, what you call, uh, monetary, um, like using um, to boost posts and stuff. I used to post posts all the time, right? But I had a religious um, platform on Facebook, right? So once I start talking about George Floyd death and start talking about that's when Joe Biden was running from president against Trump, they allow those things to be going on, on Facebook because it looked good for Joe Biden and it looked bad for Trump. But as soon as Joe Biden was elected, they pulled me from um, boosting posts and they said that I was a political pledge. To this day, I cannot monetize my Facebook page. And they offer me, like, I have a, pro a professional profile on Facebook, right? But mm -hmm. it doesn't allow me to monetize my page. They said because I'm a, a political activist. I'm somebody in politics and stuff like that, right? And they want me to go through some um, other... Uh, ID other, and everything, right? Right, and I do they they the my ID. They took my monetization they want, away. Yeah, they want my ID. So <laughs> it's already known that Facebook is against black movements and stuff, right? And I gave them my ID. I gave them my ID, right? And, I, and they want to show proof of addressability of that. And then, and then uh, just playing games. So, you know, these people have an agenda. So all the negativity that we see going on on social media, because you got to remember, Facebook owns Instagram also, right? And WhatsApp, right? right? And, and, Google, and, and Google have some type of partnership up with Facebook. All right? So the Google also owns what? YouTube, right? So right. they know on their platform that they want to target certain things, target certain people, prevent certain people from talking. There's a lot of certain nonsense that's going on in the black community to uh, be uh, out there. Why? Because it's going to get views. It's going to distract people, black people, from what's really going on. What's really going on. Yeah. It's almost like the circus. I remember reading about it many, many years ago. You know, uh, it was the Romans that started that. The Romans started where it was you, they had the circus to distract from all the politics, from all the, the killings they were doing. It's the same kind of rule book that, you know, America is drawing from now. It's like the same thing we use with, and that's what media is, right? You've got the TV, you've got um, Facebook. Propaganda. All of, right. All of and it. You won't propaganda. Really, no, I'm just saying it's propaganda. That's right. You won't really recognize that pop, uh, pop, uh, propaganda until you literally leave the U.S. I remember when I was in Italy and I was sitting there and I was watching the news. And I was watching the news about something that was happening in America. And that's when I first saw the propaganda. That's when I first saw that we in America actually live in this bubble um, and we're literally just kind of go off of what we're being told. And we don't really realize how the outside world views us, you know, and, you know, I would, even today, earlier today, I was talking to someone and a brother said, oh, um, I'm from India and um, Barack Obama was your president for a while or whatever. And, you know, did you know that he was actually harming Muslims while he, everyone was providing him hope and love and all of that in your country? I mean, it's just so many things that the, out world, the outside world sees that we just don't see. 
you know, so um, media has a way, like you said, of having the propaganda, of having um, people to be able to um, kind of be distracted by what's going on in every day. Um, this, I let's know look that, at it. You know, we TMZ. Kind of, go ahead. Let's look at T T TMZ. TMZ is now a media uh, TMZ. <laughs> um, can I add something? I'm sorry, were you speaking? No, I was going to say TMZ is, is a media okay. outlet now. It's a news station. They have their own news, right? TMZ. Mm -hmm. And they spread what? Gossip, right? Talk about gossip. gossip. The news is, the regular news is just like this, like TMZ, because it's propaganda. But I won't let um, actually continue what she was saying. Well, basically, I feel like social media destroys our attention span. If you really pay attention to it, it's like TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. Time is running out. Instagram, instant, fast, quick, hurry. These face, uh, Facebook reels, they take about from, you can make a reel from like seven seconds long to about three minutes long. Everything is so short, 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 short. That uh, our attention span is now like really short and we don't have time to to sit and um, listen to an educational video, let alone read a book. They have programmed our minds so much that it's just now our reality. Do we have an obligation within our communities to kind of uh, get people together and supporting within our own um, communities to get appropriate behavior so that, you know, you do see it reflected on media like Facebook and things like that? Is that something yeah. that, you know, we go ahead, sir, at the bottom. I was going to say naturally she can respond. To my okay. What was that? I'm sorry. Now, uh, he was just saying you can respond. It was uh, related to just community um, involvement, you know, and trying to get people together in the community and kind of, I don't know, I guess hold people accountable to a certain degree for some of their behaviors and things, you know, on social media. Should we like say, for instance, uh, something goes on in the community and they blast it on Facebook. Is mm -hmm. it our responsibility as a community to go to these people and address it so that it, it so that it stops? You can um, address it. You could get your community together, but the community, it depends on where you are. Where are It can be big and could be small, but then at the same time, it's sometimes it's hard to get everybody on one accord. Even if you do, you know, um, hold somebody accountable uh, within the community, we also have to remember that social media is worldwide. So that's just like a little tip of the, the battle. I mean, how do you, how do you stop it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Abu Bada, and uh, when it comes to like uh, the uh, community and the masjids and things like that, if you see people, you know, with the inappropriate behavior and things, you know, is that something you, step you to think them. that... In Islam, yeah. you step to those. So no, in Islam, is done, we don't leave people doing sins and wrongdoing. This is part of our religion, right? Mm -hmm. Allah says, yeah, yeah, Allah says, you know, uh, you prohibit what is wrong. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yo, if you see something wrong, you guide will be yad. He said, if you see something wrong, you change it with your hand. And if you cannot change it with your hands, you speak out against it. And he said, if you cannot speak out against it, you hate it in your heart. And that is the weakest of faith, right? So right. as a Muslim, when we see people fall into um, uh, issues, we have to, we believe in coming in and fixing it. We don't leave people to like fight, kill, destroy each other, especially as Muslims, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what we should do is that we, have, we should have people in the community that specialize, understand how to talk and deal with people, who know how to do, um, deal with problem solving, and have them get together and meet go and address these things like for example there's something on the internet real popular right now it's, it's trending right now that girl got hit with the brick that somalian girl right. i know everybody's seen that right yeah, mm -hmm. right so you know yeah. I, I don't know if you want to bring it there but we're talking about social media so we should bring it up right <laughs> yeah yeah most definitely and so this girl she got busted off face with brick she's like she got a pumpkin head right right oh, oh, hitting me, mm -hmm. right i do my homework i do my homework before that young lady uh, page was banned, I looked at all the videos. I did too. I, I did too. You know, I see her talking this feminist stuff. She don't need no man to protect her. Right? You see, I know y'all seen that video. Yeah. Right? She don't need no That's man right. to protect her. That's women right. are the protectors. Men only protect what they put, what's in their possession. See, I watched all of them, right? Um, and then I was like, hmm, interesting. Then she gets in a fight, allegedly, and some guy busts her in her face, and she's mad. Because men don't come and protect her, but you, karma, some people call this karma, but you know, what goes around right. comes around. You were talking about you don't need yeah. women, all the protectors and not men, then here you get hit with a man, you ask a mental. Right? I don't want to say that men should hit women, you know, we, I don't believe in this. That woman's somebody's mother, you know, I don't agree with some of our behavior on um, social media, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't bust no woman in the brick, could have killed her. That woman has uh, children, right? Um, 
do you protect women? You know, somebody asked, do you protect women? It's not in your care. It's not your women. So, you know, I had an incident last month, right? Um, I have my children for the summer. I have all boys, right? Three boys. And I was in this, I took my kids to this piece of this uh, restaurant. It was a Muslim owned restaurant, right? So there was a sister in there who was a uh, Southeast Asian Muslim, a little majority Southeast Asian community. And somebody was, this guy came in and started pulling on her hijab. You know? And some guy came in and he started trying to pull off her hijab. I knocked the guy out the store. I hit him so hard, he fell out the store, right? So I was telling my son that, you know, you can't be on your phone, man. You're like 14 years old. What happened to you with your mom's in the street, man? You see me getting in a fight with this guy. I knocked this guy out. You still on your cell phone. You should be like looking at your brothers, you know, make sure things are okay. Do I need some backup? You know? And my kids are half right. Egyptians. You know, my kids are half Egyptian. Oh, so I'm like, yo, what's up? You on your phone? You know? So yeah. when, when that happened to the sister, you know, some of the men didn't want to do it. They don't want to help her. All right? right. Some of the Muslims did. They're like, they don't know what to do and stuff like that. But I grew up in the streets. I know how to fight and I know how to read situations, right? Um, right. that one who happened with the brick, that was a whole, totally different story. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um should God I also you know, thought, to, go ahead, go ahead. You know, some people say the men wasn't trying to help her, but I wouldn't see some of the response videos from the guys. Some of them said they came after the fact. Some said she was fighting. I mean, she was fighting somebody else before she got hit with the brick. So I'm like, you know, women need to take some lessons from this. Right. And that's a lot of things that women like Kara don't take lessons from. Is that, yo, if you want to be out there, you need to learn how to defend yourself. And if you can't, if you can't defend yourself against men, you should be out there in the streets at night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, even that incident with the sister. The Muslim sister, why am I? I told the sister, yo, it's late. You should be in the house with your, she had little kids. I said, you should be in the house with your husband. I said, mm -hmm. leave the store. That's what happened to that guy. He come back in the store. Right, right, right. Women still don't take heed. Even her, as a female, she wasn't even taking heed. She wasn't doing nothing wrong with this particular lady. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So, we get to the black women now, not all black women, but black women, you know, with the feminist movement, they want to be equal as men, but when it's time to fight, a lot of them can't fight. Some black women can fight, ain't gonna lie. We know that already. I know some right. black women can fight. But right. women like Carl got hit with the brick. She was talking to talk, but when something happened to her, it was time for her to protect herself, whatever, she couldn't do anything. And the people who was actually with her didn't do anything for her. So I don't think that's yeah. like a wake up call for that female because I don't think she's gonna learn her lesson. A lot of women don't learn their lesson, unfortunately. No. Right. I wouldn't put my life in jeopardy for somebody else that don't care about their life. Right. If she put herself in that situation, I'm not saying it's it was right to pick up a brick and knock her besides her face with it, but I mean you play dumb hey. game. When I, look, hey, I look at it like that. Sometimes you come across the wrong person at the wrong time with the wrong mouth, you're gonna get what you can get. And it, like you I said, if you want to be out there in the streets and you want to be about it, then you take what comes in them streets. Or you can stay your tail at home and do your thing in a safe environment. So you get what you get. You know what I mean? You get what you get. Um, but, you know, even if she could handle herself, really, even if she could defend herself. Um, I remember seeing the video that Natural shared with me where the woman would slap this uh, white man in the face and then uh, uh, took two steps behind him and start twerking. Oh. I mean, come on. Well, you know, and this is the same woman that got hit with the brick. And I'm like, okay, well, you know what? You know, black black folks, we got a code. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you said, it's karma. You get what you get. I ain't gonna come help you if you don't know how to act. That is, that's not that's not that's not my business. That's not what I do. I protect I, and me especially. I protect the weak. That's something I've always done. You know, but I'm not protecting somebody that don't take care of themselves. Two tears in a bucket. I'm out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So. But, but but a lot of people's using, a lot of the feminists are using that incident in this video to say, look at men, look at black men in particular. Look at their behavior. Okay. Look, they do that all day, every day, no matter what the situation is. Yeah, they're always going to find a problem. They're always going to find a she problem with men, black men, black men. What? She, she got paid, too. That girl got paid. She got, I see her gold phone page, $41,000. She got paid. What? Yeah, I see her gold phone page like right now. Yeah, she, she, got she, got 40, right. she got paid. She got paid. She a good hustler. I'm from New York. I know a good hustler when I see one. <laughs> yeah, she got well, paid, man. Whatever, whatever. I mean, she's been putting herself out there so long. She, you know, whatever. She give what she got. She got her thing. She got her I dollars. One mm. gave her four thousand dollars. I looked at the whole gun. The gold fund me. I looked. Some guy gave her four thousand dollars. Oh, that part. 
That show you even yeah. even as men we feel sorry for women. Look, oh man, these guys. Are, somebody gave her. I seen one guy four thousand. You know what? That was people who don't do their research because social media is big. It's bigger than one video. There's always more to a story. Because I mean, something flagged with me when I saw brothers back there, and she's yelling at them, and she said to them, uh, "What you know? Why aren't you doing something? What are you gonna do? Why?" And one of them literally said in that tone, "What am I supposed to do? What do you want me to do about it?" <laughs> and he said it in a tone, not like I don't care about you, but I almost felt like he was saying in a tone like, "You ain't about to put me up in your business. What you want me to do? You know, is that kind of tone? What, what do you want me to do, yo? You got yourself if in it, this, you know? If it is in African culture, there is, you know, you know, because we Muslim, right?" So and, and that girl is actually Somali, so that's a whole nother. I can take it to a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah religiously, because I've seen a lot of her videos. Says she don't care about Islam, and you know, in Islam, you you know, in Islam, you know, with women, even the woman's not related to me, we should respect women. And if right. a sister get ahead, you know, I'm from New York. I grew up in the in the eighties and the nineties. I became Muslim early two thousand. Yo, Muslim bust heads for the women. You know, mm -hmm. we don't you know we don't like to see women getting beat up and none of this stuff. I hope she come back. Maybe she's her internet. So her internet was lagging before here. She's back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have seen that. There's, a, there's some cultural things about that. It's not African American culture, what those guys said. Now, in some cultures, and, you know, I don't touch people's women in general. There's some cultures, you know, you sh like I remember one time I was overseas and this woman, these two ladies fighting in the street. They were throwing bricks at each other. I was in actually Egypt. These women were throwing bricks at each other, fighting over uh, selling some tea, right? So, um, the men gathered while these women throwing bricks, this big brick almost hit me in my head. The men wouldn't touch and stop. Why? Because one of the guys in there come and stop and touch the woman. Now, he got to fight that woman's family. Oh, man, why are you touching my wife or my sister? You know, why are you touching her? You know? Oh, she left. Okay, Maybe off. she come back. Yeah, yeah, I know her I internet was lagging. Her signal, yeah. Yeah, internet is lagging. But we could talk, you know, you know it, 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 even that situation with the Africans, there's some cultural context to it you know sometimes men don't want to get involved with women they don't know because they don't know what drama is going to come behind her or they don't know, you know what her story would be right they don't know what was gonna, what's going to come back to them later on you know uh, you know black men a little bit different we would say something some black men were like you know you know maybe look at her and say what type of help she need or you know maybe the guy had a brick in his hand or telling you don't do that we we'll talk them out of it. You know, you're going to make us look bad. I told people like this in the street. Black people fighting each other. Black men, black women, black people fighting. And I tell them, like, yo, you do that, and the police come, or somebody going to record you, you're going to make all us black men or black people look bad. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea what happened. I lost my connection somehow. So do you guys hear me? We hear yes. Okay. Sorry. I am now on my iPad. I had to hurry up and jump in on a different device as a backup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll do the best I can with what I got. All right. Let's see here. Sorry, folks. You know, even once as a kid, when I was like 14, I used to study, I study martial arts most of my team. Mm -hmm. And one of the first lessons that I learned from my teacher who was Black American himself, all right? You know the first lesson he told me? Hmm. He's told me, if you see domestic violence with a woman and a man never get involved and he was also law enforcement he was also he worked for uh, immigration back then right he said you never get involved and we asked him why he said if you get involved a number of things could happen the man could kill you over the woman the woman could turn around and fight you and they both could kill you wow. so he would say those are cases for law enforcement right you can lose your life or your freedom Behind that situation, right? You know, that's what I learned. I was 14, 15. I used to tell that to my kids too, my, my sons, you know. Yeah. So that's like a reality that you know is going to happen to a person one day. He has to make understand well, there's certain type of situations that you could get involved with helping somebody, and in some cases, you can't. Domestic yeah. violence, you know, but a woman being beat in the street and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and, you know, I don't like that. Me personally, no, no one wants to see a woman getting beat or abused, you know, right. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, we've got to be really careful about how we handle one another, too. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times, you know, women have to be careful what they say. You can't just run off at the mouth and then think nothing's going to happen to you either. A lot of, you know, I, I travel a lot. A lot of cultures, even women run their mouth. This is, 
you know, as Muslims, yeah, he taught he taught to this ignore them and keep him right. Yeah. No, women, women know what to say to get the man upset. You know, women got that natural way to argument to, you know, hit the man. <laughs> you know, because I've been married for a while before. You know, man, women be saying something like, "Oh man, this drop kick this lady right here. This drop kick that maybe no one go get. Maybe you know, this drop kick yeah. one time she shot. But you know, women know how to trigger things. You know, so me are taught to just what ignore them. Don't follow your emotions. So even the guy in that video, whoever hit it, we don't know. You know, that's something to know that he shouldn't do. A right. woman get you upset like that, you shouldn't reach that level to um, hit her. Right. If a brush, yeah. you know, man, a brush, come on, man, you know, a smack brushes a brush, or a brush, you know, but brush with a brush? Right. That's anger. That was anger. That was, that was nothing but was, anger. She must have had to say something to, you know, for women know how to say things that, that were a miss of a man's ego. Right. Yeah. That's Even true. so, I don't justify the whole brick. I mean, uh, men are physically stronger than women anyway, but mm -hmm. I just think that that's out of anger. Yeah. Probably yeah. lost it. Messed with the wrong person. Absolutely. Got what she got. But it's, isn't it yeah. crazy how social media took that and then immediately people were on her side and just started giving money? They um they posted, whenever it was first posted, they per posted like a small portion of the video. What made her seem like the victim. Even though she, I could say that she was a victim, but she was a victim by choice. She put herself in that situation. You chose to be a victim. Right. That's how, I mean, that's how I feel about it. You chose that. I mean, you, you should know when to walk away. Don't antagonize a person that you can't physically fight. I know that's right. Yeah, if you're not ready to defend yourself, you might want to back up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, especially women. She arguing with somebody she don't know was a stranger. You don't know what that guy has. You know, if I got a gun, knife. You don't know what the guy at. Yeah. You know, so a lot of a lot of these younger females, these females, they don't. Well, some of them, some of them females, they be carrying too and stuff. But some of these females out there, they run. They don't know what the next man is really capable of doing. Man, some mm -hmm. men could kill. Some men could kill. Some men have no problem in their heart kill somebody. Yeah, I mean, that they, brick could have killed her. <laughs> that brick, yeah. you know, especially the size right right of her face, yeah. right there yeah, by the temple, could kill her right there. It's all in how this woman talks, carries herself, behaves. All of that's going to impact, you know, what you get out in the community. So she got what she got. But, um, you know, uh, I'm looking at, you know, social media and I'm also looking at, um, you know, how um, the gender wars keeps going back and forth. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of getting to the point where, you know, I'm, people say they're tired of it and more and more people are kind of falling away from it. But at the same time, it, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. It just looks like it's it's an opportunity. to. It's like I feel like every time somebody gets hurt. They jump in the gender wars. A lot of it just seemed like a lot of hurt people. Social media has become a battleground between black men and black women, from feminism, misandry, misogynistic behavior, the gender wars. I mean, it's just all over the place. It's all over the place. And then well, it's ongoing. I used to, but, fight you know it, but I, I used to fight it, and I used to fight it, and I would see wrong, and I would, and I, all I ended up getting was jumped on and things like that. Oh, it's none of your business. You don't pay my bills. Blah blah blah. <laughs> And I'm like, but sis, I mean, I'm just saying, he said you was cute. Didn't mean you had to throw a whole bikini pick up in that jerk, you know? <laughs> but you know social media made that the norm. Yeah. The Instagram models. It's the norm now. Everybody, and I say everybody with quotations, everybody wants to be an Instagram model these days. This is what they're showing, you know, showing these young women. And sadly, it's not only the young women, it's the older women. And yeah. like I had said before in our last live, it's yeah. the older women competing against the young women. Wow. Mothers competing against their daughters. Wow. It's just unfortunate, and it's how it is. But, mm. a, lot of that's a, but a lot of that is just a reflection of self-hate and inferiority complex. Mm -hmm. So when we, look, when, we, when we look at things in a deeper way, psychological, all of that is just reflecting that the trauma that Black Americans have from slavery and we taking out our frustrations on each other, mm -hmm. right. and the gender and the gender war is feeding this. Is the see we don't want to address the white man. We can't address the white supremacy. Right. We can't address the government and white supremacy. We can't fight them. We right. don't have the, the, model, the finance, the the leadership, the money, the weapons. We don't have that to fight against white supremacy and systemic racism. So we take out our frustration with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the black woman is fighting with the black man. Say so he's not a provider. Well, the reason why the black man is not the provider that he should be, mm -hmm. because systemically we've been what boycotted, right? Redline mm -hmm. from economics, right? right? So black people don't want overpower white people. 
Mm -hmm. So when, when we start dealing with the internal issues, why we have problems, where is the root of it coming from? Mm -hmm. Then we'll be able to address them. And we got to, you know, real talk. Real talk is, yo, black people need to start talking about making curriculum, having conversations about how to overthrow white supremacy control over black people. Then we're going to have start noticing when we're able to do that, being independent from the government and meaning being independent from white supremacy. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. We start, we start what? coping with not coping we start dealing with our issues because as long as we don't deal with our trauma from slavery sick people ill people cannot function as normal people meaning that we can't govern ourselves right as soon as we have our own communities as soon as we have our own health care and we have these type of uh, uh areas for us to work within then we can start working on anything on these things but as long as we're within that uh structure that you know the white man has it's, it's going to be very difficult for us to be able to look at those issues seriously. I mean, sometimes I think another thing too is I think people don't realize that we have a different psychology. You know, we don't have the same, that's why we can't necessarily go to anyone if we need help. Um, because you're, you're not only are you unpacking, like you said, years of slavery and you're unpacking that uh, institution that's been built uh, through generations, through your grandparents and then your mother and you watched your mother and your father go through this. And then now you're going through this as a result of what they went through. And they don't realize genera generationally it goes back so far. So then when you go to an outsider outside of the community to talk to them about your problems, they're looking at what you're currently going through and not really understanding that this is a generational issue within the black community and understanding that not only that, but we have a different psychology of how we see things, how we view things, how we expect outcomes to happen. It, it, not everybody is just built the same. I'm just sorry. If people are offended by that point, it just is what it is. But we are not the same. We do not think the same. It just will not be that way. So we need people within our own community who are therapists, counselors, um, and those of the like to be able to relate to us. You know, my son had some things that he had on his mind. I'm a woman. I'm, it's, I really am not equipped to help him in what he is dealing with. I can deal with the surface items, sure. But as, as a young man, he needs a black man to be able to give him that foundation of what he needs. You know, it, it's not just enough just to have one person. You know, we need a community. We need a tribe. We need a group. We need to buy black, you know, be black, the whole, the whole thing. It's definitely, you know, I was, I was telling one of my friends before, because now I worked as an imam for a number of years, right? And I was explaining to some of my black associates, when we talk about, like, marital issues, marital discord, we call them Arabic issues, I noticed that the black couples, even the Muslim community, marital problems are not the same marital problem of, like, immigrants, right? So I'll be in one community, we be, be like a multicultural community, so I tell them when the immigrant woman, Muslim sister, come to me and have marriage problems, she's asking me, for example, hey, can you talk to my husband? She don't want no divorce. Can you talk to my husband to do this and do that with my our children and to do this? You know how to fix their problems when it's the black woman. She's like, yo, how can I get a divorce Islamically for my husband? I'm like, what your husband do? Oh, he can't get home from work. I'm like, there ain't no reason for divorce. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know. Yeah, you, you probably right. know too. Yeah, yeah, you know these lives before. Yeah, I know. So, I'm like, sister, you know, I tell a lot of my companions. I talk about them about like if people come to me. I'm like, you know what? I said, the guy who wife gave him the less headache. I said, does it mean that in his house, there's no problems going on? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that there's no problems or disagreements in their house. But I said, I look at those individuals who don't come out with it sometimes, or I go to their house and I visit them, and I know the spouse and the, the mother, I mean, the husband and the wife and the children. I find out that a lot of them, they are very closely related. So when they have issues in their community, right? The woman's maybe father is somewhat, somewhat connected or related to her husband some, somewhere down the line. Hmm. I believe cousins, second or third cousins, family members, all grew up in the same village. So the man would think twice to do her dirty because the woman, some form of fashion, is related to her. Wow. In the black community, we, have, we don't even want to marry our neighbors. Right. <laughs> somebody I grew up with, you know, somebody with the school together with. Uh -huh. somebody who our parents grew up uh, our parents or know each other we don't want to do this in the black community no more back in the days we did it yeah a lot of our grandparents in the black community are closely related second or third cousins or grew up in the same area a lot of our even great great grandparents were uh uh married at young ages yes mm -hmm. 13 14 years old. i have a, i have a social of minds he one day he had a lot of children with his wife 
lot of children. They got like maybe 10, 15 kids. I don't see that. He loves his wife. He told me one day, he said, you know, I've been married to my wife since I was 12 years old. I said, you kidding me? He said, he said yeah, I've been married to my wife. I was 12. She was like nine years old. And it's culture. That's what they do. Mm. He said, and he said that they grew up together. It was children together. Yeah. We came adults together. He see, his, mm. his life is very close. Right? See, black people, we got away from a lot of these things. Why? Right? One, slavery, number one. Yeah. Number two, uh, capitalism. The capitalism mm. wants everybody out there working, men and women. Mm. It's destroying a lot of things in the, the black family because capitalism and certain people or the, uh, in the American society, you know, one, you know, a lot of that feminism is really based on capitalism getting people out there in the workforce. Yeah. So those are the got broken, broken together. My brothers, I was looking at my own grandparents, like my, on my father's side. My father's side of the family from North Carolina. My father's grandparents were two brothers who married two sisters from the same family. Two brothers who married two sisters from the same family. I look at my mother's side of the family, same way in form or fashion, distant cousins, grew up in the same area, everybody has the same background, know each other. Mm -hmm. Today, we don't want to know each other. You know, you have a lot of issues going on in the, in the blacks in America, but people have to find out one day the white man way of doing things don't work for black people. Right. It don't work, man. Marital problems, relationships, raising children, and especially education, because in those public schools and education, that's where our people's getting brainwashed and we're learning um, individualism and not collectivism, how to work together as a group. Mm hmm. So mm -hmm. that's another big issue on social media. We see a lot of individualism going on. We might say as people follow their egos, but yeah. Eurocentric individualism that Europeans themselves don't practice when it comes down to making money and mm -hmm. separating and dividing. Yeah. I think I was, another thing too is, you know, you can single it to Facebook, but you can also look at it with YouTube. I think a lot of times, you know, I was talking to someone, they were like, oh man, you put your podcast on uh, YouTube, you make money. I'm like, dog, I wasn't even thinking about the money. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, you know, I, and I was like, you know, but it, it was it was interesting because that was the first thing that came out of his mouth was, oh, you about to get paid. Like, what? What? Wait a minute. We're you want to be able to use social media to reach the masses, right. not just to get paid. Right, right. If you're in it for the money, you're in it for the wrong reason. Right, right. But, but money is important. But we don't money is cheap. important, but so is money the message. Is message. So is the, message. the message is more important than the money. Yeah, yeah, all day long. That's what's wrong yeah. with us today. Yeah, that's just how I feel about that. Chasing chasing algorithms, the algorithms. Mm -hmm. That's what gets you paid on YouTube. If you if you mm -hmm. understand the algorithms, yeah, like this. But you know, beyond social media, um, social media is just uh, is just showing the symptoms of the black community. You know, right. that's all you see. You know, it's the symptoms that we have going on in the black community that's not being dealt with. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I'm I'm 45 years old now. I got three kids. I'm getting old. And um, sometimes I sit and say, is it worth <laughs> the fight? If it's really worth the fight, yeah. you know, if it's worth the fight. So my, my next conclusion is that we're going to have to start dealing with other people like us who think like us. Yeah. And then ev everybody else, you got to put that to the side. You know, you know? I, I've been a big proponent and I know a lot of people, you know, will say, hey, you know, we need to help all of our people. There's some people you can't help. Real talk. You can't help some people. They need to stay where they're at. And, and, and truth be told, I want them to stay where they're at because then they might come in and ruin what I got going on. Or what we as a collective have going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not everybody needs to be in the tribe. You know this what I mean? goes back to me saying that, that you can't build with everybody. You can't save everybody. And um, you have to have some type of understanding. And just like he says, surround yourself with like-minded people. Because that's the only way thing, things are going to work. Because some people are just too far gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as and I've been saying it a lot lately. And I just feel like everybody's been taking that taking that pill. You know? The red pill or the blue pill, it don't matter which one. But they're both they're both swallowing that pill that's being given to them and not really using their minds to think beyond, you know, with their day to day clicker, watching the TV, watching the news or going to work, getting in that rat race every day. Right. So you get up, you go to work, you get the kids off, you go to school, you do this, you come home, cook dinner, go to bed, wrap it up, do it all over again the next day. And everybody gets caught up in that. And then they say, what are you doing on Saturday, Sunday? Cleaning the house, cooking, sitting around, relaxing. All these people that we have to be able to move collectively together to make something happen, we just need people to be more interested. You know, we need people to look at podcasts like this and say, you know what, I think I'm going to get out there on that Saturday or Sunday and get involved. It's not only about being involved, it's also about being consistent. Mm. Because sometimes we move off of emotions. 
And we do things based off of emotions, just like the George Floyd situation. You want everybody wanted to join the movement then. Yeah. You know, whenever um, an officer kills an unarmed black man, everybody wants to do something then. Then after all that dies down on social media, on the news, everybody gets caught. everybody's silent and they go back to their regular scheduled program. Right. I'm glad you brought that up. Consistency is the key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's 100 percent true. Consistency. You know, uh, even in Islam, yeah, even in Islam, there's an Islamic teaching where it says that, you know, when you do worship, right, mm -hmm. you know, any type of good deed, as long as it's a little bit and that it's consistent, consistency build up to being a lot, uh, abundance, long term, right? Mm -hmm. So with the consistency in the black community, we don't have consistency. We don't even have accountability. <sighs> That's my biggest issue right now. Is accountability. That's been my word for the past two weeks. Man, we, is we accountability. About accountability. It is especially self-accountability. Yeah, on the last show, I feel like, you know, at the top of it, um, you know, at the end of the day, I do truly feel like even though men lead the household as they should, women truly lead in so many areas um, at the end of the day. And accountability really starts with us, in my honest opinion. Absolutely. It honestly starts with us to be accountable, not only for ourselves, but for our sisters and, you know, helping our men to be accountable as well. You know, a lot of brothers, you know, they're private. A lot of our men are private. We're very social, right? We're social, emotional. We're more out and involved in the community. I think it would be more incumbent upon us to be able to make that happen because, you know, like I said, just as a whole, men don't tend to, to move like that, you know? So if we hold some accountability and we get, you know, sisters together and say, hey, you know, um, uh, uh, let's do this or let's do that or, you know, hey, sis, that's not cool, you know? I think that's where it starts. Honestly, I really do. I think it starts with women. I think it starts with women holding ourselves accountable because we can't hold, hold anybody else accountable if we can't hold ourselves accountable. So first see the flaws within ourselves and correct that because some people you'll go to and speak to them about what they're doing and you can't speak to them about what they're doing if you're doing the same thing, but just in a different way. Right. Right. That's true. So that's in true. order to hold somebody else accountable, you have to hold yourself in a certain standard for them to respect you enough. Mm -hmm. to listen to you and to understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Absolutely. Hold up, hold up ethics. We need to have a, what you call a hold up ethics. Mm -hmm. Black people, we don't have a, um, we don't have, we do have it in some sense, but we need to have, make it more clear and explicit holds of ethics. You know, in Islam, you know, I always tell a lot of my companions, you know, African-Americans or Muslim, my companions, I always tell them that, you know, after the death of Malcolm X, in the U.S., I never, we never really see anybody who continue the work of Malcolm X. Likewise, Martin Luther King Jr. After his death, we didn't see that many people continue his work, right? So, black people, we need to start having a code of ethics. Islam is very big on code of ethics. Mm -hmm. Most of all Islamic law and literature is about code of ethics, right? right. Uh, how you hold yourself, how you govern yourself, how your family structure is. You know, all these things are related. Family structure and government structure are the same structure, all mm -hmm. right? If I can't have a family structure, then you definitely won't have a government structure, right? Mm -hmm. So, as a, as a Muslim, we understand the importance, the importance of of, of uh, ethics. We call them adab, adab, right? Ethics. Um, black Americans, we need to have a deep code of ethics, of morals related to family structure, related to how to deal with each other when we're in disagreements. Yeah. Can I say you something know, real quick? Mm -hmm. In order to have a family structure, for one, you have to believe in the family structure. Mm -hmm. Today, in today's society, single mothers are glorified so much, they feel like they can do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And in, like I said, in order to have a family structure, you have to believe in the family structure. You have to believe in keeping that family together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in keeping that family together, it's not going to work. Divorce is necessary, and I never want people to think, oh, well, you you need to take whatever you want, to, that you, you have to take everything somebody dishes out. Um, in some it, cases, it, it, I it agree to that. Together, right. So I want people to understand that sometimes it is in your best interest to 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 make that uh, a divorce or to make that split if it's absolutely necessary. But at the same time, like um, Al Bubadar was saying, you don't just come to it and say, oh, that brother made me mad. He hasn't been coming home, and he didn't do this, and we've been arguing lately, and um, I'm, I'm not happy. I want to go. Yeah, I believe that divorce is the last resort. Right, absolutely. I would be the last resort. Right. Me, I've been married for over 10 years. I'm not getting a divorce. Yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> married for 17 years, um, and then I had a short three-year marriage, and there I am, you know? Things happen. I yeah. understand. Things you happen. know I understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things happen. So what I was going to say is that we need to have a code of ethics, then we need to learn 
to agree to disagree. And this is another big problem in the black community that we could be on together on black consciousness, but as soon as we disagree with each other on small issues, uh, we stop talk we stop talking to each other. Yeah. We do. Or want to harm one another over, over something that could be spoken about and, and you could just get over it. Yeah, but you know what? I think that anger, I think that anger that we hold is, is honestly, like we were saying with psychology earlier, it's generationally deep. It is. It's, it's, it's the pain of what your current life is like based on your, what your childhood was like, it was based on what your parents, I mean, I think that anger that, you know, when it, it starts to exude from someone, you know, if a brother is talking to another brother and he tests his manhood, you, you know, you, you're, you're dealing with a lot of pain, a lot of trauma that comes out at that moment. It's not just that one singular act. I believe that culturally we were brainwashed to hurt one another. Yes. And, and that's what we do. And it's been going on and on and on and on. It's just a vicious cycle. It is. It is. And, and somebody benefits from it. The power shocks benefit from that. Right. Think about it. U.S. government does not want uh, black people able to compete with them or to replace them. Mm -hmm. Now, we look at, for example, historically related to the Caribbean island and what happened when the slaves overthrew places like Haiti and Jamaica, right? Mm -hmm. When the slaves were outnumbered, outnumbered the white people, the Europeans, and the slaves did what? They end up killing, taking revenge, um, taking the wealth, so on and so forth, taking control. Right. Well, the government in the U.S. don't want that to happen here. They want to stay in power. They have to we're, control we're not, we're not outnumbered. We're unorganized. That's the problem. We're unorganized. We're not outnumbered. Not here. Mm -hmm. We may not have all the resources that they have, but at the same time, we're not outnumbered. Mm -hmm. We're not. I think we're unorganized and we don't we don't unify enough mm -hmm. to there's overthrow no the government if we wanted to. There's no so I don't think, but this, the thing is, this, we're not able to do anything right now. So the mm -hmm. next talk will be or the next thing will be, how do we change this? Mm -hmm. This is looking at the youth, mm -hmm. the younger generation, yeah. community, community, schools. You know, I can't remember. I'm, I'm in New York City, right from New York, the mm -hmm. most liberal state you know, after California. Uh, when it comes to black consciousness, you know, it's a lot of that in America. I could think about every aspect of black consciousness that I grew up with as a child that's still with me today, right? And, and, and certain individuals. But when I look into the black communities, even the black conscious community or any black community right now, right. Mm -hmm. when the kids are going to school, they are getting taught Eurocentric ideas and learning about how big and glorified is the white man and stuff. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, we would say I remember in the eighties. My mom would tell me, "Yeah, Christopher Columbus didn't discover America." But when I go to school, I have to put it down on the test that he discovered. Yep. So the yeah. children look at well, what the black people have to say is not important. Is what the white man have to say on his test and exam because that's going to determine how much money or successful I'm going to be in their system. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Many it's black sad. folks. Mm. Yeah, it's sad many... because the same thing happened with my son. Is he? And, and I literally said it. I said, mm. "Kid, I understand you know that, but you have to put what they're expecting you to put. Because if you don't put that." then that answer will be marked wrong. So he brought it up in class and was like, hey, yo, but it's not that. It's this, 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 and that. But you still have to mark. Like you said, you've got to mark what they say. So that's that, like my, that son. Is, mm. my son. My uh, son, he's nine and he argued the teacher down. Yep. So that also impacts the, the cycle of the child as a prominent adult. Mm -hmm. I believe one thing at home, but in the workforce or in the workplace or outside, I have to believe and do something else. Right. We have to start changing these things. That's why it's important to focus on the youth because now we need to have our own schools, our own curriculum. That's what I was going to say, our own curriculum. In order to have our own schools, we have to have um, the, re the resources. And what I mean by resources is the money. Right. A lot of um, government, uh, the government don't want to fund like um, African-American um, school systems or organizations. It's, it's hard. Sometimes you have to change the name of the organization in order to get funding. But if we care so much as a community, why not put our own resources and money together? You don't see that happening too much. Because people don't want to, they don't want to give a dollar. They don't want to give a dollar. Yeah, so I think another so. way, Go ahead. I was thinking, another way we could look at it or do it is that, okay, then we start having our own sessions in books in our home in the house, mm -hmm. what's not being taught in the school. I mean, we're going to have to look at every aspect of how are we going to change the condition of our black people for the future in the United States. We have to start looking. How are we going to have to do? We need economics. We need an educational system. We need a uh, medical system. You know, look how many people like, you know, I was reading this book. Self-hate and self-defeat, right? It's by Dr. Amos Wilson. 
I believe he died in 1995 or 96. He was mm -hmm. in his 50s. He was young, right? Mm -hmm. A very uh, important person in the black community when it comes to intellectuals. Uh, he was a black psychologist. Mm -hmm. uh, died young, young. And we look at some of the diseases that our people have, some of these diseases or illness could be prevented, right? Right. So we need to have like educational about everything that black people are going to deal with. Health, mm -hmm. science, morals, family structure, you know, military, law enforcement, right? Because we want to govern ourselves, right? right? So we have to start looking at what we need to do, what type of people we need, what type of resources we need to do these things. And look for those who are... Who are like each other because i see in the black community a lot of people will turn around and say hey i agree with everything we're saying on this table right now right, right. but how, where do i start at mm -hmm. I, I, know, say, I say pick an area i say if you're look at what you're follow your passion because you're you're only going to put as much work into something that you're passionate about so if you're passionate about education then put it into education if you are a chef well then look at opening restaurants within the community you look at what you enjoy and what you're passionate about and mm -hmm. and work through that medium Do you have, can you take any questions from the, the guests in the audience on I Facebook? Can. Yeah, ask them if they have any questions. Yeah, do you, I, it just, you guys, if you have anything, if you have any ideas, um, put them out there, or, let us know, you know, if you or have they want to come on, mm -hmm. or they want to come on the live themselves. <laughs> Anybody ready to come on live? <laughs> the more, the merrier, you know? Right, right, yeah. Well, if you know of anyone, you know. So I see some comments. Uh oh, I think we caught, uh, we lost natural. As long as she have the link, she could come back inside. Yeah, I um, I don't see them, you know, because I'm now I'm on my iPad, so I can't really see. I see, I see back. some of them. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, let me see if um. Well, if anybody again, they wanna. Salafadine, Abdullah. Mm -hmm. I like yeah. YouTube because you know a lot of people don't use Facebook. You know, I have a lot of associates don't have don't have no Facebook account. Most yeah. of my male friends don't have Facebook. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now is right now I'm just kind of we have to have uh, 50 subscribers, 50 subscribers on the black carpet page on YouTube that's already set up, and then once mm. we do that, then we'll be able to stream live through uh, YouTube as well. So you can stream live. You can stream live through YouTube on Streamer without having the numbers of subscriptions. Yeah, it wouldn't let me do it. And it wouldn't let me do it at all. You sure? I, I, I have I'll a lot. Yeah, I'll work with you later. Maybe we kind of figure it out. We talk. Yeah, we figured it out. Because yeah, I have, yeah, I have, I have two, three channels on YouTube, and one of them barely has uh, 100 subscribers, and I go live on it sometimes. Oh no! On Streamyard, at least 50. That's why. I don't even think I have 50 when I opened up that channel. Okay. <laughs> my main one I have like uh, 2,000, but the, the one I put my lives on, another one YouTube, I don't even think I have 50. Okay, you have to show me what to do, and then uh, so yeah, we look at it. Yeah, we'll get it. Yeah, we'll get it through YouTube as well. Yeah, so uh, you know, uh, I, I really appreciate you guys. Um, I think I'm gonna uh, go ahead and wrap it up here. Um, it's been a little over an hour, and uh, I just wanted to kind of touch base and and look at uh, some of the topics surrounding social media, uh, whether it was positive or negative, and. Uh, I think we have a good grip on some things. Uh, the next show um, will be Friday again. It's every Friday. And we'll have a new topic to look at. Uh, I want to thank Natural, of course, who is always here every Friday. And our guest, Abu Barda, um, and, you know, for your input and your knowledge. I really respect you for coming on. Thank you. Thank All both right. of you, ladies. Thank you very much. All right. All right. I'm going to end here. Salamu alaikum. Peace and blessings to everybody. All right.